I wonder if you would turn to Luke chapter 19, verse 39, and we'll read through to verse 40. Luke chapter 19, verse 39, and verse 40. And this is what the Bible says. There were some Pharisees, and Pastor Quanda spoke about those group of people. We'll talk about them this morning. There were some Pharisees in the crowd who said to Jesus, Master, restrain your disciples. To which he replied, I tell you that if they kept quiet, the very stones in the road would burst out cheering. The message paraphrase says, Jesus said, if they kept quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. It's an awesome thing when we understand that as the Passover came in the ministry of Jesus, this was the final Passover that Jesus was about to celebrate. There came a change in the ministry of Jesus. He was ministering in the region of Galilee and that time came to an end. And the Bible says that Jesus did something significant. He, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, still doing miracles, still healing the sick, but now the time had come for him to depart. And I really wonder what it must have been like for Jesus because Jerusalem was going to be the place where he would be crucified. Jerusalem would be the place where he would suffer in a way that was really something that you and I would not be able to go through at all because of the intense persecution and suffering that he would go through. This is what he came to the earth to achieve. And he's on his way to Jerusalem. And as he comes to a town called Bethany, he begins to foreshadow what is about to happen to him because he stands at the tomb of Lazarus and with a loud voice of authority, he commands Lazarus to come forth and a miracle of resurrection takes place. The people go crazy. Everyone is wild with excitement. This is amazing what is about to happen. And then they come to a place of the stables and Jesus sends two of his disciples ahead and says to them, as soon as you go into the village, you're going to find a donkey tethered along with her young colt. And he says to them, go and untie the donkey and bring the donkey and its colt to me. And, and if they say to you, what, what are you doing? This donkey doesn't belong to you. Say to them, that the Lord of all needs them. And family, this was to fulfill prophecy. This was a significant moment. This was a moment of prophetic fulfillment because the Old Testament spoke of a time when God, the Messiah, would come into Jerusalem. If you wanted to know who the Messiah was, then stand at the gates of Jerusalem. Oh, and by the way, Daniel would tell you the very day, the very date that Jesus would come into Jerusalem. And the prophetic word was, tell Zion's daughter, look, your king arrives. He's coming to you humbly. Wow sitting on a donkey. I would have expected some kind of impressive steed, some kind of a rare horse breed of some sort and let him be distinguished from the rest. It was customary in the time that victorious, proud, I've got to show it to everybody. Generals would come on big horses, but not Jesus. He comes as a king. He comes riding humbly on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. And the two disciples went ahead, found the donkey, as Jesus said, and they brought the two donkeys to Jesus. They put their cloaks on the donkey and their prayer shawls, and they bring Jesus into Jerusalem. There were others that were excited and they were triggered by that act of laying down their garments and their prayer shawls and they too did the same. In fact, Jesus, he rode over a whole carpet 
of people that would lay down their garments and lay down their pressures in honor and in reverence of their king who was coming into Jerusalem. And as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the people, oh, they went wild with excitement, family. In fact, the entire city was thrown into an uproar. The whole crowd, they began to joyfully praise God. This was not a solemn occasion. This was an occasion of rejoicing. And with loud voices, they began to praise God for all the miracles that they had seen, specifically the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus was the very center of that procession. There were crowds that went ahead of Jesus and there were crowds that were behind Jesus. And everyone in that crowd began to shout their praises to Jesus. They were shouting the glory of Jesus. They were shouting things like, bring the victory, Lord, Son of God. Bring the victory, Lord, Son of God. I wonder if you've got your palm branches. I wonder if you would begin to wave them in the air and begin to join these wonderful folks as they give honor to Jesus. Bring the victory, Lord, Son of David. Bring the victory. They would shout, He is blessed. And He is the one that Lord Yahweh has sent. The others would shout, We celebrate with praises to God in the highest. Bring the victory, Lord, Son of David. Oh, we celebrate. Come on, would we begin to wave our palm branches this morning? We celebrate with praises to God in the highest. There were others in the crowd. They shouted, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. They were shouting their praises to Jesus, giving honor to Jesus. He was the focus of their praise. Come on, family, let those palm branches of victory, let those palm branches of praise begin to wave in this Jesus dome this morning. Others would shout, welcome God, bless the King. Welcome Jesus, we welcome you into our city. And they would shout, God, bless the King. Others would shout, may the Lord bless the King who comes with the authority. May the Lord bless the King who comes in His authority. There were others that were shouting, we praise our powerful God above. Others would shout, God has given us a King. Long live the King. And there were those in the crowd who said, who is this man? And the crowds would shout, this is Jesus. He's the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. I wonder if you would join with me this morning. There's a confession that's coming up on the screen. And I wonder, family, if you would join. Are you ready? Here we go. Everyone together. We're going to say this together. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. God has given us a king. Jesus is our king. Come on, let's say this excitedly. Jesus is a victorious king. Jesus is the blessed one sent from the Lord Yahweh. We celebrate our King. We honor our King. Our King rules over Durban Christian Center. His power is seen among us. And we declare. What do we declare this morning, family? Long live the King. We know He's eternal, but long live the King. Long live His rule and His reign in our lives. Long live His rule and His reign in the city of Durban. Long live the King. This wasn't just an ordinary procession. This was a triumphant procession. This was a victorious procession. This was a prophetic demonstration of the final victory that Jesus would celebrate once He had died on the cross and once his body would be placed in the tomb, and once he would be raised up, 
Jesus is a victorious champion. And before he even got to win the victory, he was already celebrating the victory as he came into the city of Jerusalem. This Sunday family was the beginning of the final week of the earthly ministry of Jesus. This was the beginning of the passion of Jesus. What is the passion of Jesus? It's the final week. Today is Sunday, then Friday comes, and Jesus is crucified, he's buried in the tomb, and then on Sunday, he is raised from the, the dead. And so this marks the beginning of the end of the beginning for you and I. Isn't that amazing? The beginning of the end of the beginning for you and I this morning. The death and resurrection of Jesus. But it was during this parade that the religious establishment began to confront Jesus. And they scolded Jesus and they said, Jesus, tell these people to stop. And right here is the downfall of religion. Because religion places genuine, heartfelt, Jesus-centered praise, replaces that with meaningless rituals. Religion makes praise something that is replaces it with something that is pointless and with something that is powerless. Religion is an organized system that robs people of real praise, removes the heart of praise, and it disengages the heart. Religion tried to hijack the praise that was being given to Jesus. Family, I've come to tell you this morning, never let any situation, any person, any institution, any demon of hell ever rob you of your praise to Jesus. No disappointment is going to rob us of our praise for Jesus. No person is going to discourage us enough that we can't praise Jesus anymore. Come on, we've got a praise on the inside of us and no thing is going to stop us from praising Jesus. Can I have a witness here this morning? I wonder if you would say this with me. Everyone, can we lift up our voice? Let's say this together and those that are watching online. Here we go, one, two, three. No situation will silence our praise. We are determined to magnify the name of Jesus in every circumstance. Like David, we are determined to praise Jesus regardless of danger or distress. We joyfully proclaim Jesus as King. Jesus alone is worthy of all honour and praise. In every moment and through every situation, we declare our unwavering commitment to exalt the name of Jesus. Religion ain't going to shut us up. David was faced with great danger. Do you remember he was running away from Saul? And he lands up in a city called Gath. It was a Philistine city. And all the elders and the counselors of the king Ashish came to him, the king of Gath, and said, do you know who we've got here? Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing to one another of him in dances? They were saying, king, they, they, they created a new genre of dance and celebration of this man. I know you've got the cha-cha and you've got all sorts of other things. There was the King David dance. All the ladies were giving the King David dance, whatever that dance would have been. But they got all excited. Oh, Saul, he's, he's slain as thousands, but we've got a new dance because David, he's slain as 10,000. They said, who are you letting stay here amongst us Philistines? And the Bible tells us that David got to hear about this and he got fearful. And in order for him to preserve his life, he started going crazy. Well, he pretended. He was a good actor. Oscar performing, uh, Oscar performing acting here, where he started going crazy. He let the dribble kind of come all over his beard. And, and the, the king said, well, look at this man. He's not so, so threatening to us. But in the midst of that fearful situation, 
in Psalms chapter 34, this is what David wrote. In the middle of fear, in the middle of I don't know how much longer I'm going to live, David said, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. Praise is not what we do when things are going good, family. And only when it's going good do we praise Him. I tell you, praise is something that you and I do day in and day out. I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. Do you have some praise for God this morning? He says, I will constantly speak of His glory and His grace. And Jesus said to the Pharisees, well, if they don't carry on praising me, if they keep quiet, then the stones will break out into song. And you know, family, Jesus was saying something profound here. The stones will cry out in song. I believe that what Jesus was saying is that God does miracles for us when we create an atmosphere of praise. Religion will tell you to keep quiet. Have you ever gone to a church and they say, shh, and you're even too scared to walk? You're on tiptoes. Why? Because you can't make a sound. God's afraid of the sound. No, 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 no. Jesus said something opposite to what religion was saying. He told those who were, those who were pursuing silence, he said, if these people don't praise me, then the stones will cry out and praise me. Regardless, I will get the praise any which way. Jesus could not enter into a city in silence. And I do believe that God is present where praise is present. Let me say that again, family. If you wanna bring God in the midst of your situation, well, then the best thing for you to do is praise Him. Whenever you praise Him, then He comes in and His mighty hand begins to move that situation. Oh, I can feel the power of God here this morning. The atmosphere, hear me this morning, the atmosphere that God responds to is an atmosphere of praise. And He's worthy of loud praise. He's worthy of joyful praise. Listen, don't come with a, I've got a lemon in my mouth kind of praise. Oh God, it's so sought for me to praise you. There's great joy and there's excitement. He is my King. He is my Lord. I've got something to shout about. Hallelujah. And praise paves the way for the presence of God. Oh, they were opening up the, the, the temple of Solomon. And notice what they did in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13, when the trumpeters and the singers were joined in unison, making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and other instruments for song and praised the Lord, saying, for He is good for His mercy and His loving kindness endure forever. Now, how many of you know that that's indeed true? They were singing what they knew about God. You say, well, what do I praise God about? What you know true about God. If you know He's a loving God, then that's your song. If you know He's a powerful God, that's your song. If you know He's the God that reaches out and saves and delivers, that's your song. If you know He's the God who brings peace, there's your song. The praise is about who He is and what He's done. But notice what happens here, family. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. There's the presence of God. Can you see that praise lets us enter into an environment of the awareness of the presence of God. I wonder if you would say this with me, family. Everyone together, we're gonna lift up our voice. He has another declaration. Everyone together, are you ready? Take a deep breath in. Everyone online, here we go. One, two, three. Praise is a door that gives us access to God's best for us. 
We forsake gossiping and complaining for the praises of God. Instead of murmuring in discontent, we choose to lift our voices in praise, believing that as we draw near to God with thanksgiving, He draws near to us with His glory. I want to say that again. He draws near to us with His glory. Family, if you want glory encounters, learn to praise Him. If you want the glory of God in your home, learn to praise Him. If you want the glory of God in your business, learn to praise Him. Hallelujah. Right, I'm getting distracted. Just settle down, Wayne. Or right, here we go. Let's carry on. We, we're in the middle of a confession, right? One, two, three. Just as God's glory cloud filled the temple when the people praised Him with one voice, we anticipate encountering the tangible presence of God. We declare with boldness and faith that our lips overflow with praise. Praise will usher us into deeper intimacy with Jesus. Praise. Do you believe it this morning? Miracles. Miracles. The stones will cry out. Well, that's just a very interesting thing to say. The stones will cry out. If you know anything about Israel, it's a sling and stone country. If you've been to Israel, you'll, to this very day, you will see children playing with slings and stones. Now, I believe that Jesus was connecting the sling and the stone to praise, to let us know what praise does. If we can just but praise Him. If you take that sling and you, you spin it enough so that that centrifugal force begins to play and you throw that stone, oh, by the way, they would do that with incredible accuracy. The Bible tells us about how that Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin came against the tribe of Israel and there were 700 left-handed slingers who were so good, you could put your hair like this if you had long hair. For some of us, it would just be this, because we got no hair. But what it, if you put your hair up like that, they would be able to cut your hair with the stone and the sling. But, family, when that stone is flying in the air, it's make, it makes a sound. It makes a sound. And I'm wondering this morning if Jesus was making reference to that sound. Because when that stone would come and it would hit a giant, the giant would fall. David can bear witness with that. Didn't he take a stone and he used a sling and that stone found its way right there and that Goliath who could have done damage to David that Goliath was slain. The herdsmen, they would take their stones, and the stones were available anywhere. You'd go to Israel, you, you, you don't lack for stones. There's stones everywhere. Everywhere you put your foot, there's a stone. In other words, it's easy for us to praise. It, it, any, at any place, at, at any time, you can step into that praise. But that praise is a weapon. Your praise is a weapon. Would you tell that person next to you, your praise is a weapon. And so as that stone would go through the air, there was a serenade of the stone. And that's the title of this morning's sermon. The serenade of the stone. And Jesus, in effect, was saying, can you hear the serenade of the stone? And do you know that when that stone is whizzing in the air, you know something is going down. There's a Goliath coming down. There's a predator that's going to be killed. Something is coming down. Something is being destroyed. I've come to tell you here this morning, Durban Christian Center, that there is power in your praise. If you want victory, 
victory over the enemy, then know how to praise Him. When Jehoshaphat was surrounded by the kings of the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Muonites, what did King Jehoshaphat do? He put the, the, the singers and the dancers, I don't know if I would have volunteered on the roster for the, I would have declined on planning center for that morning because I've got to go even in front of the soldiers and I'm going into battle. But what they did is they began to sing and they said, thank you singers, give thanks to the Lord. Now notice they weren't singing about the enemy. They were singing unto the Lord. You see, there's something that happens when you sing unto the Lord, when your heart is a aligned to the Lord. Don't sing about the enemy. Don't sing about the wall, but sing to the one who destroys the wall, who calls the wall to fall down in Jesus' name. And they began to say, give thanks to the Lord for His steadfast love endures forever. And there was the wishing of this stone, this praise that was going up into the heavens. And when they began to sing and when they began to praise, the Bible says, the Lord set an ambush against the enemy and the enemy was struck down and defeated. What about deliverance from prison? Look at Paul and Silas. They were in prison. They couldn't get out, but they knew how to praise. And when they began to praise, there was the first ever recorded jailhouse rock song that they sang because the, the jail began to rock. There was an earthquake. And when, when that place began to shake, that's an old joke, I know. Uh, my apologies for, for the young folks. I see only the elder ones laughed. Thank you for keeping me company. But they were able to go out and they were delivered from prison because of the power of praise. What about blind Bartimaeus? When Jesus came past, what did he shout? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when that praise went out, that man received his healing. What about Jericho? When Joshua came against Jericho, they walked around and then they had a praise on the inside of them and the trumpets began to blast and nothing can remain the same for you when you give God praise and the walls came tumbling down. Family, this morning, the city of Durban will be conquered for the glory of Jesus when the church steps into a consistent atmosphere of praise. If you will praise Him, Durban will bow its knee. If you will praise Him, Durban will be turned around. If you will praise Him, God will visit our city and crime will be a thing of the past, violence a thing of the past. I wonder if you would join with me on this final confession. And I want you to lift up your voice voice family. We're going to shout this out with all the breath that we've got. Are you ready? Even those that are online, here we go. One, two, three. Praise keeps us, the church, walking in victory. Praise enables us, the church, to march forth in power. Praise enables us, the church, to forcibly advance against enemy strongholds. Praise enables us, the church, to keep our proper domain. We will not tap out when we praise Him. We are stepping up. We are stepping forward. We are taking ground. Let's say that again. We are stepping up. We are stepping forward. We are taking ground. No rock is going to cry out in my place. Oh, come on, I want you to hear you say that loud and strong, family. Can you say that again? Here we go. No rock is going to cry out in our place. We are not backing down. We are not giving in. We are not giving up. We are not backing down. We are not giving in. We are not giving up. Come on, tell the person next to you. We are not backing down. We are not giving in. Hallelujah. Can you all stand together this morning? Just before we go, we've got to spend some time praising our King. We've got to give Him some praise. We've got to find something to give God a, a shout of praise about. Come on, I don't know what it is that you are facing, but I want you to see those walls falling down. I want you to see that cancer healed in the name of Jesus. 
We see the deliverance of our sons. We see the deliverance of our daughters. We see, we see our children prophesying. Oh, come on, do you have that praise this morning? Begin to praise Him. Begin to glorify Him. Begin to exalt Him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together, church. This is Palm Sunday. Oh, let everything that has breath begin to praise Him. Oh, we come. service on the horizon 
But if you can walk in that atmosphere of praise, as your praise goes up, the miracles of God begin to work within your midst. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting great things from God in 2024. So much more. But I tell you what, we need to know how to praise our God. We need to know that we might not be feeling like it, but I'm going to praise my God. Oh, the walls need to hear my praise. That sickness needs to hear my praise. Hallelujah. Oh, every situation needs to hear my praise. How many of you say this morning, I'm going to forsake gossiping. I'm going to forsake those things that are inhibitors of the miraculous. And one last time, let's give Him some praise. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Those of you that are watching online, I'm going to hand you back to the presenters. Can we lift our hands to the Lord? Oh, I feel a shift in the atmosphere. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we, it's a pity, man. We're just getting started. Man, what an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. So powerful. What an awesome, awesome time. Family, thank you so much to each one of you that have joined us to celebrate Palm Sunday together, lifting up the name of Jesus and glorifying His and name. And praising His name. Amen. There's power in praise. There's power in praise. Praise is our power. Yeah, exactly that. So family, I thank you so much. If you say, Cody, I've made a decision to follow Christ, I want to encourage you to get on our website. There's a tab that says, I've made a decision. Yeah. Click on that tab and fill in the form. Our pastors are waiting to receive those emails and follow you up give you a call and walk this new life of yeah. salvation with you. And I want to encourage you that there's so many other ways to follow us. Yes, there are. We've got our YouTube pages, Facebook, Instagram. We are on TikTok, so you can follow us on yeah, TikTok. And we've got our website TikTok. and our DCC app as well. Yes, so I want to encourage you, download the DCC app. There's so many free resources, but most importantly, the sermon notes are yes. there. So you can take those sermon notes, fill in the blanks, and then you can email those notes to yourself and then have those to meditate on throughout meditate the week. Yeah. through the week. What an awesome thing to do. And family, I want to encourage you, don't forget that while watching these streams, to like, follow and share. Yes, it's so please. important for us and we want to encourage you to do that. We want to build up an algorithm that lets people all over the world know that there's a fire that is coming yeah. from Durban and Christian Centre. And just invite a lot more people yeah, into exactly the kingdom that. of God. Man, I hope you enjoyed the service. Thank you so much for being a part of it. And also, don't forget that there's so many things that are happening. Yes. That there is our Palm, well, today's Palm Sunday. Today's Palm Sunday. But there is next week, Thursday, the 28th, <laughs> family, we have a Family Miracles, Miracles prayer, prayer meeting. meeting. And I want to encourage you to be a part of that right here at the Jesus Dome at 7 p.m. Also, our services for Good Friday and Easter it's Sunday are at 8 30. And oh, sorry, at 8 a.m. Oh, my word. 8 a.m. <laughs> and 10 30 a.m. And if you can't make it to be here live, then I wonder if you could join us online at 7.45 for an awesome, awesome time celebrating Jesus and all that He's done for us. But listen, until we see you again next week, have a God-blessed week ahead. See you soon, and God bless you. Don't forget to praise. Don't forget to praise.